Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Video Game Math Busting. I know I'm not the voice you're used to hearing with that intro, but in this new series, I want to do what Robin did with Nocturne and provide a streamlined documentation on the math of my favorite game of 2025. Claire Obscure Expedition 33 is THE game of 2025, set to more than likely sweep the game awards. And with that will come a new wave of fans who want to see what all the hype is about, and I bet a good 5% of them will want to know how much damage they're actually doing. Well, luckily, I'm here to provide all the answers, combining my own research with a variety of documents found by the community into one easily digestible series. So with that said, let's take a deep dive into the math of Claire Obscure Expedition 33. In this first episode, I'm going to cover how damage and scaling works for skills. The next episode will cover secondary damage sources like burn and parry, and then future episodes will cover damage taken, speed, and crit rate, so look forward to those when they drop. But unlike the games I typically cover, the formulas in Expedition 33 are mostly straightforward, but they do have their own intricacies that made them really fun to discover. To show exactly what I mean, Let's begin with the common starting point for damage, the base attack, which will always be equal to whatever value the might stat is. So for example, if might is set to 100, then my base attack will deal 100 damage, regardless of level or enemy, which effectively means that leveling up only has a minimal impact on your overall damage. As shown in this comparison, might will cap out at 1347 damage at level 99 across all characters. However, when stats are set to base like I have here, notice that Might still has some variance. That variance comes from the current weapon's attack power. To use a better example, here's my endgame Mael with her objective best weapon, the Yevarum, fully upgraded to level 33. Yevarum has S-class scaling in defense and A-class scaling in agility, and thanks to this handy dandy guide made by YouTuber Ravensblade, we see that S rank scaling gets a 99% damage increase, and A rank scaling gains a 63% damage increase. So to get to the formula, we first multiply the weapon's base damage, in Yevarum's case 3358, by the scaling multipliers. So for S rank, 3358 times 1.9936 equals 6694.5, which the game rounds to 6695. And for A rank, 3358 times 1.6342 equals 5481.5, which the game should round up given the previous example, but doesn't. Yeah, the game is really inconsistent with what to round and what not to round, so I just say go off whatever the screen says it is. Then we take the new numbers and subtract it by the base damage. So 6695 minus 3358 equals 3337 and 5481 minus 3358 equals 2123. These are the numbers that you'll see on the weapon select menu once you allocate stat points to them. Also worth noting that the game does not take pictos into account when calculating the formula, so you can crank the numbers up to insane degrees with them. But anyway, the final weapon total is then calculated by adding the weapon's base power with the two scaling values. So 3358 plus 3337 plus 2123 equals 8818. But that's just taking scaling into account. Level 99 gives a total of 297 stat points. That's three sets of 99 points. That should optimally go into whatever two stats your weapon scales off of, and might. But let me tell you, might throws a wrench into the entire formula. See, putting 99 points in the might has two effects. Raising the might stat by 156, don't ask why specifically 156, and multiplying the base weapon damage by what should be 50%. I say should, because multiplying 3358 by 1.5 gives us 5037. However, the number that displays in game is 5026. 11 points lower than what the value should be. To rationalize what I was seeing, I decided to test another weapon, so I reset my Verso and gave him Samoso, his uh, best weapon by the way. 
Leveling up just might raises the weapon's damage to 4832, when it should be 10 points higher at 4842, when multiplied by 1.5. Essentially the exact same discrepancy. From that point, I spent hours banging my head against the wall to try and rationalize what I was seeing. After going at it for a while, I decided to look back at Raven's Blade's video, and what I found afterwards shocked me to my very core. I wanted to know the exact factor of difference between the 50% multiplier and what the game displayed. So using Samoso as that example, I did 4842 minus 4832, which equals 10, and then did 10 divided by 4842 to equal 0 0.00206 rounding up to 0.002. Then doing 1 minus 0.002 gave a multiplier of 0.998. An interesting discovery for sure, but to see if this holds weight, I tested it with Yevorum and found that 5037 minus 5026 equals 11, and then 11 divided by 5037 equals 0 0.00218. 0 Point zero zero two. Oh, oh my God! Yes, after testing this against Lune's Corlim, Ciel's Lithosin, and Minoka's Joyaro, the exact same variation of zero point zero zero two came up, meaning that while a maxed out weapon is multiplied by fifty percent, they are also silently nerfed by zero point two percent or times 0 0.998. 0 0.998. This number has haunted me ever since I found this out. It kept me up the night I discovered it because, like, how could this happen? The formula was so simple, and it's not like the extra damage would have changed the final number too much. This has to be an error. I, I, I just have to refuse its intentional. It's just so... Okay, I'm sorry about that. I've calmed down now, so let's round out the formula. <laughs> After getting the very sensible number and adding it to the scaled values of the original weapon, yes, for some reason the formulas aren't recalculated with the higher weapon power, we see that 5026 plus 3337 plus 2123 gives our final base damage of 10,486, which is finally added to Might's 1503 for an attack value stat of 11,989. This is how much damage you will always do with your basic attack while using Yevorum, without Pictos or landing a critical hit. And free aim shots will always do half of that damage. And speaking of which, let's now move into the second part of this video, where we discuss how to maximize your damage using Pictos and Lumina. First though, I wanted to give a special thank you to Reddit user Frama for both letting me bounce questions off them, as well as providing the groundwork for the formula. And also a very special thank you to both Robin and Queen Akaya for helping me stress test and fine tune the formula. None of the following section would have been possible without your support. But as for that formula, it essentially boils down to one giant multiplication problem. And when I say giant, I mean... Yeah, I know this looks a bit daunting and also messy, but by breaking it down section by section, you should see it's actually not that bad. Oh, and for stress testing, I'll be using my new game plus 2 Mael with Yevorum and her third gradient skill, Gamage. But starting from the top, attack power is what we just spent the past insert timestamp here of the video going over. So that's an easy 11989. That number is then multiplied by the skill's individual multiplier. Every skill in the game has a different value that is multiplied by the attack power. The spreadsheet in the description has a list of every single skill multiplier in the game, as they relate to each character. But for our example, Gamage is times 50, so that is exactly what we'll use. Well, that's what I would say if it weren't for perfect QTEs. Yeah, you know, quick time events? Yeah, getting a perfect QTE will increase damage by an additive 20% per QTE. This number stacks multiplicatively with the skill multiplier. And since Gomash has a really easy QTE, that's 50 times 1.2, which equals 60. Combined with 11,989, we'll round this part of the formula to 719,340, 
absolutely insane damage without any Pictos or Lumina. And speaking of which, that's the next part of the formula, and they're split into two sections, multiplicative and additive buffs. And unfortunately, the game doesn't make it clear which is which. Luckily, Framma came to the rescue and outlined them all here. The link to the spreadsheet will once again be in the description, but essentially, if a Picto or Lumina says increase damage, it's additive, else it's multiplicative. The first Picto section is the product of all multiplicative buffs, so for this example, we'll be using three. At that store, since I run a low HP build, Solo Fighter because I almost always run solo, and Glass Cannon since I'm aiming not to get hit. So that's 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.25, which equals 2.8125. Then for the additive section, it's 1 plus the sum of every additive buff. For this example, we'll be using the following Pictos. Burn Affinity, Confident Fighter, Gradient Fighter, Inverted Affinity, Powerful Shield with 9 Shields, Stun Boost, Tainted with 1 Status Effect, and Warming Up after 2 turns. Also, for demonstration purposes, I included Immaculate and Shield Affinity, but I don't typically run these two because I like both Consistency and Immortality. But added all together, that gives us a total of 4.35. After Pictos, there's also additional modifiers that can increase damage, most of which are applicable here. Critical hits increase damage by 50%, something we can guarantee with the Lumina Last Stand Critical. Hitting an enemy weakness also increases damage by 50%. However, hitting a resistance lowers it by 50%. But given that Gomage is Void Element, basically Almighty from Shin Megami Tensei and Persona, we never have to worry about it getting resisted, so our damage is constant. However, one quick thing to note is that the super boss fight against Painted Clea sees her weak to Void damage, so she is the only enemy who this would be applicable to. Unfortunately, Painted Clea is the only super boss you can't refight, and since I already beat her on this cycle, I can't use her as my test dummy. Eh, I guess her boyfriend will do. When a target is stunned, the damage they take is increased by 20%, although the stun boost picto is applied in that section. The mark status effect also increases damage by 50% for one attack, or two with double mark, and we can use breaking mark, marking shots, and stay marked to near guarantee it. Then finally for this section is the attack and defense modifiers, which are your standard RPG buffs and debuffs. In our case, we'll be using Greater Powerful and Greater Defenseless for a 40% increase each. And yes, despite the greater variance made only possible through Pictos, they're applied in this part of the formula, since the description clearly states that they're added to the Powerful and Defenseless multipliers. Lastly are any special conditions a character might have. This specifically refers to the damage boost from Mael's stances, Verso's perfection, and CL's twilight state. Since we're using Mael, we obviously want to be in Virtuos stance, so that's a big fat times 3 to the entire formula. Oh, and one last thing to mention, number of hits just refers to how many hits the attack does. But since Gomage is only one hit, that value remains unused. So with all that said, the final formula for Gamage with Yevrum should look like this. 11,989 times 60 times 2.8125 times 4.35 times 1.5 times 1.2 times 1.5 times 1.4 times 1.4 times 3. For a final whopping value of 139 million, more than enough to one-shot even Simon, the hardest boss in the game, on New Game Plus... This broke me. I had no idea what I did wrong. I labbed everything out perfectly, I checked the numbers so many times, and yet the damage was way higher than I calculated. I kid you not, Robin, Akaya, and I literally spent days going back and forth in DMs trying to figure out why the math was so off, despite everything looking so straightforward. But after much back and forth, we narrowed it down to two important details. The first, and easiest to explain, is a little hidden multiplier we collectively dubbed the Jennifer English buff. Named as such because Jennifer English, Miles' voice actress, 
said on one of her live streams that she asked the game's director to make Mael more overpowered. And I can only assume this is what they did in response. We discovered that certain weapons in the game have their attack power increased by most commonly 10%, or some other multiplier, and this buff almost exclusively applies to Mael. Specifically, the following weapons have their attack power increased by 10%. Chantium, Cecium, Stalum, Volsterum, Yeverum, Sekerum, Melorum, and Ciel's Algoron. See, I told you it wasn't just Mael. Additionally, the following weapons have their 10% bonus accidentally applied twice. Glacium, and the infamous Metalum, which, fun fact, used to have a whopping double damage multiplier, which not only confirms that this is an intended buff, but also a strange nerf considering Minoka Saidaro currently has that same double damage multiplier. All this to say that instead of having an attack power of 11,989, Yevrum's true attack power is 13,188 when rounded, which is almost 1,200 more damage. But wait, there's more. The next blocker that stood in our way, which took multiple days to nail down, was a subset of Pictos I like to call the Notorious Four. First Strike, Sweet Kill, Teamwork, a Dead Energy 2, all provide a hidden 10% multiplicative increase. Which, yes, means Teamwork's buff works regardless of whether or not you have a full party, and is multiplied when you do by itself for 1.21. But we don't have to worry about that. At first I thought these were all multiplicative buffs, so I put them with the Pictos, but no matter what I, Robin, or Kaya tried, nothing worked. All our numbers were either just slightly lower, or in some cases higher, than what the game was telling us. It was only after hours of labbing did I think of something. What if it's applied to attack power instead? So given this, I did 11,989 times 1 1.1 raised to the power of 5 for simplicity's sake, which gave me a total attack power of 19,308, or 19,309 when scaled up. Yeah, rounding is really inconsistent, like I said. And after putting this number in, this happened. This solved literally everything. Every problem we tried as an example was now hitting the mark. So it's safe to say that we finally, definitively, cracked the damage formula for Claire Obscure Expedition 33. And with that, I want to thank you all for watching, and if you like what you saw here, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to help build a community, and also hype up this video so it gets boosted in the algorithm. Until next time, this is Japanator, signing off.